Charles Erton built this building and I think it was truly a remarkable accomplishment for uh, someone who really had never built anything like this at all. We used to call him Uncle Charlie and he was approached by some what he called LA type developers who came up on the single track road in LA and said we want you to build a, a high-rise building and he said oh, I've never built anything higher than two stories and so he went home and he told my Aunt Ida she said well you can do that that's no problem at all. She went out and bought him a book on how to build a high-rise. Read a book on a how to build a uh, building of this uh, caliber and then do it. That's really a remarkable story and something that uh, I think he will be remembered for uh, for many generations to come. In the golden era of Hollywood back in the 1920s, 30s and 40s, the Granada became a testing ground for many of the big movies that uh, were not only popular then but have become part of the, the great history of Hollywood. 1939, for example, Gone with the Wind was tested here just a few weeks before they opened in Atlanta, Georgia. During the 1940s, many stars such as Doris Day, Fred Astaire and others attended the opening of their films here. By the 1980s, the Granada made its way from exclusively movies to becoming the home of the Santa Barbara Civic Light Opera. I think the Civic Light Opera is the best thing that happened here. It rejuvenated it. It was the first thing where people really came. We filled the theater. For over a decade, the Granada became associated with some of the best Broadway productions on the West Coast. People would come from North County, Ventura, just to see our shows. As the production values soared, the venue sank into showing signs of being tired and worn. The Granada, in many ways, had become like someone's aging, gregarious aunt who could tell you great stories about her youth, but today could barely get dressed up and have company. Granada Restoration started many years ago with uh, community interest in creating a real performing arts uh, venue. When this project finally matured to the point that it looked like it would really go ahead and that there really would be a new performing arts center in the Granada, this became a very attractive target for, for architects. Now our firm, uh, then known as Phillips Metch Sweeney Moore, uh, has a long history in Santa Barbara, starting in 1906. This building was built before the 1925 earthquake, and uh, there was a substantial amount of uh, seismic uh, strengthening which was needed. The folks that came together to renovate didn't just want to have a beautiful theater to sit in and watch shows. They actually thought about the things it take and put productions together. They uh, made the big decision to tear the stage down and enlarge it and to make sure that it was acoustically wonderful. And that's all those faceted panels that you see on the side of the building. Shut up! And then when we do a, a uh, amplified event, he designed these drapes that would come down and help deaden the hall just enough so that it wasn't overpowering. Whenever I attend an event here, I can sit and look at every detail and think about the hand sketches that I made to establish these designs. And it's just a real thrill. It's very, very, very special. There are other technical innovations that were brought into the building as well. The house lighting and the LED lighting that illuminate the auditorium are just gorgeous. So one of the really important things about the Granada Theater is our relationship with the resident companies. We have great classical music programming that's brought to our stage by Community Art and Music Association, by the Santa Barbara Symphony, by UCSB Arts and Lectures. We have great dance programming brought to us by State Street Ballet. And we have fully staged classical opera on our stage that's brought to us by Opera Santa Barbara. The Granada Theater is not only fantastic acoustically, but it also has such a modern facilities that allows us to go from stage to the pit, and of course this is done by a fantastic crew. When people come to the symphony, they see what's in front of them. What they don't see is an amazing team of people behind the stage 
that make it all work. We've put some very challenging programs forth and each one has been accomplished with grace and professionalism. The Granada and the Granada's history, I think it really allows uh, the many people, the young people, the, the artists that are on the rise, including our artists at the Academy, to dream and imagine if. And, uh, and that's a very special uh, quality of this wonderful theater. The Granada is undoubtedly the most spectacular building in the city of Santa Barbara for performing arts space. I mean, when we bring world-class performers to this community and they walk into the building, their jaw drops, they look at it and say, wow. CAMA, in its original form, Community Arts Association, was the oldest arts group in Santa Barbara, formed in, in the uh, late 1900s. In the early days, there was no grand theater. When it opened in 1924, we immediately moved our orchestra series to the Granada, and we were, we've been presenting at the Granada off and on for 95 years. Before the Granada was here, we didn't have a venue like this. We pride ourselves at Arts and Lectures on bringing the best entertainment from around the world. We want to make sure that they have a venue that matches that. When we were able to pull together and put on My Fair Lady this summer, that was a spectacular event. To take a, a town of 100,000 people and to bring a New York production of that caliber here in Santa Barbara and to sit in the audience and watch people's faces and how excited they got to see that be performed was just unbelievable. One of the concepts we had fairly early on was trying to come up with a concert series outside of the main hall that would be in a more intimate environment. And we came up with the name Upstairs at the G. You make me forget about the bumps I used to love. I'm so happy that it's you. There's so many things for us to do. Being able to call the Granada home for us is absolutely a privilege. The move to this beautiful theater, this really made us grow uh, all together and uh, I'm, I'm so happy about being able to call this place home. The symphony is so grateful that we've had such a loyal base of patrons and subscribers that want to be part of the symphony experience and now that we're in the Granada they can experience it in a way that they never have before. True landmarks are not easy to make. They take a lot of love and care from the community that really builds and surrounds the entire operation. There's no doubt in my mind that 50 to 100 years from now, the Granada will still be considered one of the great landmarks of the 20th and the 21st century. I remember when the theater was divided up into three movie theaters, and then to see where it is today, it is such a tribute to the elegance and sophistication that Santa Barbara is. Here we are celebrating the 90th anniversary of this grand lady we call the Granada Theater. What a wonderful, wonderful celebration this is. So how do you say happy birthday when it's your 90th? Well, I'd have to say you certainly don't look your age. You look like a vibrant teenager to me. Here's to another 90 years and a long and happy future for all of us, but especially for the Granada. I wish the Granada Theater and the entire community a happy 90th anniversary. I wish you a great celebration and many, many years to come. I expect you to be around at 190. This community should be so proud to have a jewel like this right here in our own town of Santa Barbara. I hope it'll be here for another 100 years. 90 years old and going strong, and it's going to have a lot of candles because we're gonna light this place up.